Around 150,000 years ago, we were not alone. There were six other known species of human beings alive at that time, and they've all disappeared. You see, compared to what we're used to today, in the modern world, planet Earth back then was an almost unrecognisable place. It was brimming with plants and animal life that has long since vanished, like the megafauna, which were huge animals that were left over from the Ice Age, such as the woolly mammoths, saber-toothed cats, and American lions that prowled the lands. But it wasn't only giant animals that we shared the Earth with. Until as recently as 30,000 years ago, we weren't the only human creature left on planet Earth. They were of all different shapes and sizes. We had the strong Neanderthals, the smart Denisovans, the Homo soloensis, the dwarf species, the Homo floresiensis, who stood just one metre tall and lived on Flores Island in Indonesia. And of course, not to mention us, the Homo sapiens. It's only a relatively recent phenomenon of us being the sole humanoid in the world. And if things had happened differently, we might have shared the earth with other kinds of human species walking among us. So how come they've gone extinct? Our ancestors, the early Homo sapiens, were the first modern humans and are thought to have originated from somewhere in Africa roughly 300,000 years ago. These people began to spread across the continent and migrate through the lush vegetation that used to cover the Sahara Desert. 70,000 years ago, they first successfully entered into West Asia. It was there on the Arabian Peninsula that these early humans realized that they were not alone. It was there that they entered into this strange new land and where they first saw them, the Neanderthals. These beings were very similar to us in appearance. They were a little shorter though, with wider hips, bigger bones and more muscle mass. It is believed that Neanderthals were up to 20% stronger than modern humans. These stocky people also had large heads and a very pronounced brow that has become synonymous with dumb cavemen. Their large heads weren't just for headbutting things. In fact, despite their reputation of being just a dumb ape, Neanderthal humans actually had larger brains than people do today. Although that doesn't necessarily mean that they were smarter than us. They created tools and weapons for hunting and fire for cooking. They had the power of speech and they talked to one another in ancient dialects and lived in communities of up to 30 individuals. So how did we interact with our newly found cousins? Was there peace? War? Were there friendships? Relationships? Was there trade? And how could we have possibly caused the extinction of a species that was far stronger, faster, and arguably more intelligent than us. It seems that people have a propensity for aggression. Stephen Hawking put it best when he said, meeting an advanced civilization could be like Native Americans encountering Columbus. That didn't turn out so well. And following that logic, the early Homo sapiens would have treated other human species similarly to how the colonialists treated the indigenous populations of the world, if not worse. However, some of the modern humans didn't feel any animosity or fear towards their Neanderthals. These individuals, who were perhaps the more lonely types, actually shared caves with the Neanderthals of the opposite sex. This was actually a fairly common occurrence with successful results. So much so that if you are of European ancestry, you will have around 2% Neanderthal DNA. And if you've got East Asian ancestry, you'll have even more, with an average of 2.5% Neanderthal DNA. Although, as far as we know, the interbreeding between the archaic 
and modern humans wasn't so much that it resulted in a merger of the two species and the ending of their species. As modern humans quickly spread throughout Eurasia, venturing ever deeper into Neanderthal territory, they eventually found their way east into the territory of another prominent human species, the Denisovans. They were an even older species than the Neanderthals, being roughly 500,000 years old, and the Denisova cave revealed many of the impressive tools that they used. Little is known about the physical appearance of the Denisovans, since we have found so few of their remains. It is believed, however, that their brains were actually even bigger than those of the Neanderthals. Our contact with them went much the same way as it did with the Neanderthals, and if you're of South East Asian or Oceanian descent, you will likely have some Denisovan DNA yourself whereas the Neanderthals and Denisovans are thought to have lived in small bands ranging up to a maximum of 30 individuals. What modern humans lacked in the physicality department, we made up for in numbers. Our superior language skills allowed us to live in much larger groups of up to 150 individuals. This may have been what gave us an edge over these other humans. So if it wasn't interbreeding that caused these species to be wiped out, then what was it? We may have entered into areas traditionally owned by other human species, and due to our larger numbers, we were able to be more proficient at gathering food and resources, eventually forcing them to leave in search of food, which in turn led to their demise. Alternatively, their endings may have been a much more savage and violent affair as a result of bloody battles, ambushes or all-out warfare between the different tribes, the result being speciesite and the extinction of the mighty Neanderthals and Denisovans. Of course, it could be a combination of both of these two possibilities, which are two branches of what anthropologists call the replacement theory. It does seem that modern Homo sapiens did have a part to play, as wherever we went, our arrival would coincide with the disappearance of the natives of that area. With the Homo soloensians and Homo floresiens becoming extinct roughly 50,000 years ago, the Denisovans soon after that, and lastly, the Neanderthals who lasted until about 30,000 years ago. We don't know for sure the actual circumstances of the deaths of these other human species, but things do seem damning for the Homo sapiens. For now, we can only wait in anticipation for new discoveries to be made by anthropologists and archaeologists so that we can get a clearer picture of what really happened all those years ago. Are you not entertained? <laughs>